I got. I can't lie. I thought I would not like that intro nearly as much as I just did. Welcome to Tactical Crouch, everybody. I'm Kick Tripod, joined by Volamel and Yiska, two of the smartest things. Why? Why did my yeah? Two of the smartest things in smartest people in. We are the smartest things. Smartest things. Did you guys see my Discord things. cams just totally mess everything up <laughs> for no reason at all? Anyways, thank you guys for being here. Uh, Joe, Yiska, we've been talking about doing this for a long time. I think it was back in, both of you have been on my show, Overwatch League Daily. You both do Volumel's Viewpoints, which is always insightful. And then Yiska, thinking it over, a staple of the competitive Overwatch subreddit. Every time you post one, they Mate, love it. Every come time. On. <laughs> we all know what it's about. It's, we all know it's, it's who y'all looking at. Come on. Who, so the, that stupid video that's unlisted of me singing an in sync song <laughs> yes. to who y'all flying out is now the h most watched video on my channel by I'm the sorry. factor of seven. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. My <laughs> see, my my content is the most uploaded thing on my Reddit account, so no bragging there. Anyways, let's <laughs> we we talked about this. So you you've both been on my show, Overwatch League Daily. And for those, here's a little fun fact for you. For those who have listened to that before, most of those interviews ne don't happen live. I send them questions and then they send me back their answers and I edit it into an interview because it's just really hard to get a new guest on every day and be able to like handle all the, all the time changes and, you know, Yiska's awake when I'm asleep. How do we do that? And so most of those are edited together. Like, what's your favorite color? Yiska says blue in a file and I drop it in. So, but we've kind of gotten to know each other for a while. And I, I think I posed to you, Joe, I was like, let's, uh, what, when are we going to just do a regular yeah, podcast? One of these days we should just kind of do something. And, and then like, it just kind of slowly progressed into this beautifulness that you see around you. Have, yeah. have I imagined this in a fever dream or haven't we done something like this before? We did. Like a short we did. pilot, like a teaser. I think it was before the finals, where it was like yeah. the three you of us. No, 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 it was the three of us. We were gonna do. We were gonna do a post, ep, uh, a post finals episode, didn't we? And then we just like never did. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we made it. Let's talk later. about the Overwatch League Grand Final, shall we? <laughs> That's not no, gonna happen. I'm, I'm pretty sure we did do like a a show with the three of us and you bop back and forth between our camps like we recorded it it's somewhere in the ether i'm sure check and find it but yeah i'm no almost way. positive i'm almost positive i don't believe that ever happened i'll put money on it Lord all right bet. all right we'll, we'll need our chat detectives to yes. go see if they can find this here ford find me all right there you go. So let's, they got to know, right? With Ford in there, nothing gets past the guy. No, so, no, nothing nope. gets past them. No. Nope. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the show though. So anyways, this has been months. We literally have a group in discord called podcast WIP work in progress progress. It's still that name, by the way, it still doesn't say tactical crouch. I don't know. We're lazy, I guess, but, uh, we've been kind of postulating ideas. We're going to actually do it like two weeks ago. And then for whatever reason, Joe just gets really cold feet when it comes to actually recording one of these things. He's like, I have a meeting now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and we reschedule it. And he's like, actually, I don't. Is it too late? <laughs> like, yeah, it probably is too late. So It's never too late. It's we're here now. And when we talked about what we wanted this to be, part of it was we'll just figure it out as we do it. And the other part was, well, we want to talk about competitive Overwatch, of course. Uh, we are... Mm -hmm. Avid consumers of competitive Overwatch at all levels. In fact, you're going to notice a few things. I will be the translator today because Yiska only speaks in uh, Korean metaphors. Everything goes back to how it was in Apex Season Negative 5 or whatever. And I will do my best to translate for those of you who didn't get to watch Apex Season Negative 5. Joe, you're good. You're fine. Yes. But uh, yes, I'm like, every time he's like, yeah, that's just like in Korea when they did. It's like, what? <laughs> so that's going to be happening. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, if you are in chat and you have questions you want answered, put them in the chat. If we like them, we'll answer them at the end of the show. And we're going to be doing this every week. I, I think we're going to shoot for every Monday. We had to delay it one day. No, it's, it is Monday today, isn't it? No, it's Tuesday today. 
We're gonna do it every yes, Monday. Uh, we're gonna do it every Monday, but we're doing it on a Tuesday today because, well, we feel like it's it. special. It's episode one. Come on now. So, um, anyways, uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, well, no, I need you to. St- I need you to come out and speak publicly on something really quick. Yes, so sir. you and I, we did Contenders China, and yes. uh, we had a blast, and we got probably one of the best looks out of anyone in the entire world at looking at the uh, tier two Chinese scene. Um, mm-hmm. But your comments about some of the best players in China were met with some skepticism because uh, they're like, "Why are you using?" Do you remember when you said like these? Here are the great players in Overwatch oh, yeah, yeah, China, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, "Why is he using World Cup matches oh, to talk about yeah, that?" Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. giving you a platform right now to tell that person to f off. I'm just kidding, not really, but well, not yeah, not not necessarily to um, skedaddle or kick rocks, but you know, I have tried to to definitely um, embed myself within the Chinese scene, or at least give it some some coverage. And um, yeah, the I think Gucci is definitely up there. You know, he I think he was the one comment that that was uh, kind of poked at or kind of, uh, you know, looked at critically. And I think that if you if you look at it empirically, you look at it from a play style, you look at it from how he's done regionally, you know, domestically in, in China, the kids, the kids nuts. The kids very, very, very strong. Um, and yeah, I think he's, he's definitely ready. owl caliber. Yeah, he's, he's, he's ready. He's easily owl caliber. Um, I don't know if you want to dive into the rumors around him, but um, he's definitely. It'll be interesting if that's you know if, if those. Um, theories you know become valid at some point that he is going to be playing on a, a korean chinese mix of some sort so i think that'll be interesting um i i, I would uh, tend to not look at him too critically because it is going to be a mix or it could be a mix so i, I think it'll you know look at it with an open perspective the guy is very very strong he's been strong i don't think i need to explain that any farther but yeah Fair very, enough. Very good, may think. I mean, it's it's not even rumors at this point, right? Like the the manager slash coach of X Six came out, basically talked about it. It was strongly implied that Gucci was going to be one of the prospects they're definitely looking at. He's apparently learning Korean. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually one thing I'm sort of wary about because, okay, so mm-hmm. here's here's the thing, right? If you want to invalidate a main tank tank's ability to shine, then this is the way, basically. Yeah. So we, we already saw this with, um, with Fearless. Fearless, exactly, yeah. in Shanghai Dragons. And granted, his backline pos- probably or most definitely wasn't the, the level of what X6 would be fielding, depending on if they bring some seven players along or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm actually quite scared because this kid looks nuts, but that has a high probability of never coming to fruition if you know if that communication isn't on point. Oh, 100%. Now, at the same time, again, like if I'm looking at my calendar, there's still a couple of months to go to learn the language. And I always thought if you prioritize that, and that also, by the way, goes for teams like London or whatever, if you prioritize that. You can in six months be at a B1 CFR level if you if you actually care. Yeah, and um, I think that's already a level of fluency that should be sufficient in order to communicate for Overwatch, especially if you customize the language lessons uh, to watch Overwatch. True. I, I, I do have to agree with you there, but I think it comes down to how coaches are postulating their strategies and how they try to word it. You know what I mean? Like you have to think about, you know, the, even the minutia of call outs and, and strat calling and, you know, exactly how he works with a DPS member. Because, again, that's one of the you know more important things to, to overwatch, especially if you're going to be playing certain strategies is how your tanks work with with your with your DPS members. So it's um, it is a worry. I hope he doesn't get kind of a. Uh, um fearless if in a sense um he is very very strong he's uh you know and not to mention that you know if anything does happen he could definitely be you know very very hot in the market come mid-season there could be trades made i'm assuming if i'm understanding the rules correctly so um 
yeah, it would be really cool to see. It's going to be cool to see him play if, if it does come to fruition. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really happy to see some, <laughs> some more Chinese representation in there. Go Gushia. There you go. I mean, and I've, I've said this, I think, a few times where the infrastructure of, uh, has obviously shown us that uh, in sports you can have people who speak a lot of, a, of different languages and still... Yep be great i think you have to you know look and say well they've been doing that for 30 40 years of bringing in imported talent and they've found ways to make those cultures work together really well and you could make Mm -hmm. the argument that you know overwatch league isn't quite there but i also i I don't like the use of they don't speak the same language scapegoat they can never be you know they can never be teammates or they can never be a winning team because of this that and i think it can definitely be a factor for sure but I don't like oh, I, I don't think you'll ever hear me say, "Ah, oh, they don't speak the same language." So, you know, I think it does put like a uh, a ceiling to how how good you can be off the start, right? Like it definitely puts a a ceiling to it that right. if you don't really work at it and chip at it, it's hard to, you know, overcome that. that yeah, barrier. like when ba- Shang- I, I think we both agree that it is a barrier. It, and it is. And mm-hmm. like when Shanghai yeah. brought in two Korean players into their all Chinese Overwatch roster in the middle of the season, yeah. you're it's it's not nearly as much as like okay we've got four months to work together exactly. and we're not preparing for specific matches we're preparing you know our actual strategy as a working team. as a team yeah learning you know trying to coalesce together learn how you know each other you know interact with one another kind of synergize bond together you know that that's the having that team chemistry is i would say just as important as having you know some some masterful coaching and and stuff like that so really like like i I think um to your point about shanghai if they would have actually had that roster together before the season and actually had four months it would be a whole nother team they don't go completely different they they still might finish last but they don't go on for it sure i i think that's a that's a fair assessment but again like you said i don't i think they win at least one of those two three games yeah, that's my cue to ham fist my core four idea. There you go, get it in. Because like Shanghai didn't have three months to build that synergy that was required for the core four. And for those who don't know what that is, I basically theorized before Overwatch League started or looked at the the track record of um, successful teams of so of teams that won major titles, and all of them were four of them. So four of those members formed a core and were always together at least 90 days with the lowest one being LW Red at I am Gyeonggi and even that tournament was a little dodgy so I think there's some time requirements in order to build that new core um, now also Shanghai Dragons should have that uh, as well as um, the new X6 core so that, that didn't seem to be a huge issue coming into uh, the season one if they indeed built the core before the season started so I, i'd love to jump into specifically that right like the the core four topic you know if we kind of apply that to london right and we look at it as two cores of four compared you know smashed together do you think that becomes an issue like down the road like could that be problematic you know trying to get people play time you know egos colliding you have two of the most winning korean teams just smashed together on paper they look devastating they look terrifying but we, we know exactly what happened and it it really didn't come to fruition right off the bat they you know won. season one State yes, they they did win, but it, you know, look at exactly how that team yeah. you know surfaced after they the sold end. off half the team. Yeah, yeah I think I know. have a graphic somewhere of the original twelve and then X's <laughs> and crosses, over the yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think with London, they always had their actual core, and they just for one reason reason or another tro- avoided as much as possible to play that. That actually hurt them. Uh, in the long run, in order to find those specific, uh, particular rounds that you usually allocate in um, in course, and yeah, in the end, basically the team that already looked great in uh, stage one and stage two came together again. And I also wonder just how much synergy really there was left in these initial cores of KDP and GC Busan. So 
No, for sure. Um, and kind of what I really wanted to touch on there specifically was, do you think that, you know, going into the future of, of team building in Overwatch, do you think that the core four gives too much power to the player, those those core players to kind of um, nitpick who is accepted to them? Or do you, do you kind of solve that with a, with a stronger hierarchical structure when it comes to the coaching staff? Like, how do you avoid kind of infighting in that sense? If you do, you know, these are my starters, this is my starting four, I build around them, therefore they kind of have a, an unintentionally like inflated air about themselves, or, or it's possible. Mm. Not to say that, that everybody does, but do you think that that's an issue? Well, for one, I don't like, okay, so even if you recognize that social entity within your team and you think you're safe, I think it's on the coaching staff to make sure that none of those qualities uh, arise in players mm -hmm. that they chose to be part of the core. Right. Otherwise, you just simply can't make him a core member. And you ha probably have to take a slightly less mechanically impressive player in there or whatever. I think Overwatch has proven to be like a, a game where intangibles are incredibly important, much more so than all other esports. I actually despise that that uh, discussion previously in other esports because it never seemed to really matter as much. Now, obviously, also in Overwatch, we have to say, there's, it's not all harmony cons consistently oh, God, in the top no. teams, right? Like, the, basically, it was almost a prerequisite that it had to have, you know, exploded once a season in order to make it even to the finals. Mm -hmm. Or uh, not finals, but the playoffs. Um, I think that clash is actually quite healthy. You just make sure have to make sure it doesn't happen in in those big big games. No, oh, can't come easily. Back together, yeah, so. you don't you don't need you know people blowing up during playoffs and not being able to play like that's that's just not an that's not good for anybody. Um, but you know, I, I yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that having a a better a stronger higher, hierarchical structure to to kind of dictate that. I think I think I support what you're saying with the core four. I just wanted a little bit more in depth exploration into that little topic. You should write a so, textbook, sorry the, yes, guys. Sorry for the the hijacking. You should just write a book, like a textbook, on on all these like oh, philosophical I'm... ideas on Overwatch and competitive Overwatch <laughs> team structure. Dude, that specific topic, I wrote, already wrote sixty thousand words about. So that pretty much is a book. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, think about you all wrote the times sixty thousand words yeah. on your your core four concept. Well. I tried to write the same article and tried to cramp yeah, everything exactly. in and kept deleting it because it didn't feel satisfying or up to the editor's requirements. And then eventually but it just... He has that artist mindset where he'll sketch something and then go, no, 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 we don't do sketches. Yeah. We only do finished work. So yeah. he has sketchbooks of just useless jargon just deleted somewhere yes. in Google Docs. On, on the okay. cloud somewhere in Google's headquarters. Like there's there exists pages upon stuff that he just doesn't like and thinks is a rough draft and throws it away. <laughs> German Fair literature enough. excursion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, here, here we go. There is a German novel called uh Die Leiden des Jungen Werthes, which roughly translates to the torments of the young Werther. And basically in that in that thing, in that writing, he has like one of those moments where he, you know, feels one with nature and all these emotions and but as soon as he tries to put it to paper or even paint it it just feels like ash in his mouth it's just mm. less true mm. i think every writer actually pretty much experiences that like you have this like even one evening you think oh i nailed that and you wake up and it's like this is depressing it's actually not at all as good as i thought it was so yeah. i don't know that was basically what happened with that article it's a constant like battle to fight that urge to just throw it away because you'll never you'll never get anywhere if you just kind of keep it it, it does kind of influence the polish of it but again you just gotta fucking press publish sometimes all right go sure. ahead all right chat remind me 19 minutes 10 seconds was the first f-bomb so uh, it happens fair enough <laughs> i just have to i just have to bleep it out so we can keep the clean tag on itunes yeah, yeah, yeah. youtube though who cares who cares, you two? Hey. <laughs> let's, let's, pivot, let's pivot a second. Let's talk about this last week in competitive Overwatch, specifically the Paris qualifier, the final qualifier in the World Cup tour. And uh, France and UK advance. France does not go one and four. 
for all the people named Dream in chat. France does not go one and four. They instead uh, do uh, quite well. Joe, tell me, I mean, tell me your thoughts here, because a lot of people were, uh, I think it was generally accepted that no matter what, the UK would be one of the two teams. Yeah. And then the second team was like, well, is it, uh, you know, Germany? Is it, is it Netherlands? I always, you, you have all yep. these little countries, Yiska, that little, uh, well, just little that. tiny countries that I don't really understand how Good to distinguish the, the difference yeah it was, yeah it was it's like the it's like the northeastern part of the united states probably for a lot of people where it's like vermont and new hampshire i don't know the difference i, I think germany could fit into te texas one and a half yeah. or two times yeah yeah fair enough it is, well, is kind of small uh, so I, w I want to talk a little bit about this so france joe were you at all surprised about france's performance in the world cup I think if anybody said they weren't surprised, I feel like I'd, I'd definitely raise an eyebrow at that. Not to not to like, you know, throw shade, but, you know, to think that they were going to rise to this level, I think was was pretty surprising. I had them getting out of the groups in second um, because I didn't know exactly how this team would function together again they kind of felt like sweden to me in a sense where it's like okay well we have a player who hasn't been seen in a long time that that definitely has a lot of question marks around it and you know players that have historically played very very well together but you know recently have they have they been doing well you know have they played together in a long time Th that's information that isn't obviously available to the public so it's it's a little bit harder but again i am a sucker for veteran and experienced status and um yeah i think they they had a really good lineup i you know i had to look past wins in that sense and actually i think he had a pretty good series especially against uk and yeah i i compared to the the other three teams i was like you know i i don't see france getting out again there was murmurs that they weren't you know performing as well in in practice but again scrim bucks is scrim bucks and yeah i, I kind of I was I was comfortable in saying that they would make it out at least. I didn't know exactly how far they were going to go, and they certainly surprised me. Um, you know, blowing the the competition away as as well as they did. I I hate when I don't like put it to paper because there was no doubt in my mind that France was going to be the strongest team. For, really? Okay. Yeah. Like, oh wow! Such a brave statement for you to make now. <laughs> oh, do we? I think we might have just lost. Both of these guys. Let me try and get them back here. My bad. Let's see. Discord might be dying here. Are we back? I think Discord? Back. Discord. Yeah. Oh, Discord. Nice. It's as soon as one amongst many came in here, it just <laughs> died. <laughs> happens same brain. thing happens in our sound checks, by the way. When we're, for yeah. Alright, so you were saying, Yiska, you were saying that there was no doubt in your mind that France was going to be number one. Yeah. I, and I had said, what a brave, brave thing for you to say after this has after happened. After the fact, yes. Yes, yeah, <laughs> very, very brave. I had no doubt that Shanghai wouldn't win a single game in the inaugural season, <laughs> by the way. And no so, doubt that London would have won. I just want to put that on the record. I wish I would have said it earlier, but I'm saying it now. Same thing. Continue your thought. Break. Continue your thought, Yiska. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, a I don't really rate scrims whatsoever because it's pretty much known at this point what French teams are like in general in esports. Just show up to LAN and like. Can we talk about scrims after this? I want to put a pin in scrims. It's pin in okay. scrims. Pin in Typing scrims. it in right now. But continue. Yeah. Sorry. I think also the quality of the the players in France overall that they've shown. Uh, including uh, like how they performed in Overwatch League. I don't know. I, I don't even know how you arrive at any other conclusion, to be honest. Uh, so I, I do want to address something here, but because I think that there is something in especially like esports and being an analyst and being somebody who is thought to be Overwatch smart when it comes to competitive Overwatch is if you just like if you always pick the you know the the two favorite horses in every race who who cares right and right. so a lot of people go yep uk i don't know if they'll finish first or second but i know they'll finish france there was a lot more bias like there's is was there is there a lot of room for them to do 
just okay. Is is that something that they do? They either don't do well, and we don't see the France and the France players that we were used to seeing, you know, even a year, year and a half ago. On the other side, they could easily blow everyone out of the out uh, out of the water. There's this kind of huge uh, delta of kind of where you could see France, but there's not really that huge delta for UK. So UK was a safe choice, even though. Like, I think a lot of people would say, if France shows up and play well, there's a really good chance they could beat the UK. And I think that that is totally fine. But if you're trying to be an analyst, if you're trying to be somebody who people want to listen to your opinions, if you say France and UK, I said France and UK. You don't follow me for my Overwatch opinions, and so you're not going to follow that guy either. And I think that there's kind of an issue that comes with that in the sense that if you aren't picking those dark horse picks and becoming the Oracle of Overwatch and getting some of those rights... People are yeah. less willing to kind of listen to you or, you know, give you the credit that you probably actually deserve, even if sometimes you have to just pick the boring picks. No, 100%. Um, I, I'll be the first to kind of jump on a dark horse bandwagon, but I couldn't really put into I couldn't make a point strong enough to, to to validate one of these other teams making it through again there's a lot of intangibles you could look at you know underdog mentality oh they're hungry but again you know in terms of actual like critical analysis i don't think that that really weighs too heavily uh, at least in kind of my weighting system i think it is important to want to stay hungry and you know want to prove your worth but when you're when you're paired up against experience of that caliber i think it, it's it it's not nearly enough um for me specifically so yeah it is kind of blame that you can't pick a dark horse pick in this instance and yeah people do no. are like well you're just saying the easy picks that like halo for instance is saying in in chats that he had germany at two germany has one overwatch league prospect player i think and meta you could also put in there sure, as well sure. as codec right one of the best team the managers teams, though have some of the best Overwatch League players on those their positions in their team. Like, even if, like, just pound for pound, there is no justification for putting Germany ahead of France. I just simply don't see it. And the same argument of people not having, you know, competed in, in like, Overwatch, I don't think wins would have to be necessarily rated simply because he didn't participate lower than a low tier contenders player why doesn't make sense to me i don't know like if i go the pound pound, pound round there then i also think that uh generally france has pretty good minds to them like demon alone can win you that thing easily he's actually but wait who's the who's the who was the coach, I think he okay. was the coach. Pace, pace is a good, good one as well mm -hmm. I, I from that standpoint um there again i have to say Radio Boy is not even a coach. So how is that a comparison? Yep. I don't know. I, I feel like if you're just just pound for pound, you can't make that argument. And then maybe if you saw scrims, that is possible. But even scrims, like, I don't think if you actually had knowledge of the scrims of Germany that you can put them uh, at second. So, yeah. It's tough. Well, we also got the the full BlizzCon bracket here. And uh, yes, Joe, yes. good good news for us. We're not playing South Korea in the semis, which is or the quarterfinals, which is nice for once. But <laughs> yeah, uh, they're still on our side of the bracket, and they're playing Australia. We're playing the UK. Which sorry, UK fans, it's just not a contest at this point. Uh, but overall, bracket wise, Yeska, I really want to hear your thoughts on this bracket overall. Do you like it more than last year? Do you think we're going to get a better, closer bracket with how it ended up shaking out this time around? Let me actually. Do you, do you have it handy? Do, yeah, I, I can make look at it again. Yeah, I'm going to so link, link in the people from Invin Global right. here because they're uh, they do good stuff. Here we go. I like Invin Global. So. Huh. Okay, well, if we, like, George sent me the like, Wikipedia pick, uh, pick, or the link. The, page, um, yeah. the, the first one is France, Canada. Mm -hmm. Whew. That's a toughie. That's a good that's, match, that's yeah. That's a good match. Especially, well, the thing is, right, 
will we see a patch okay so this is more of a question to chat and the other hosts you know do you think we'll see a patch before blizzcon because if not i think this will really dictate it'll be a great litmus test going forward into you know how you know 303 or you know very very heavy tank compositions are are kind of valued in the meta versus people that are going you know anti-tank you know sombra doomfist you know having those other things you know that's been a big kind of um ideal clash between na and eu is that you know na has been very much on the side of you know we don't like goats we're going to kind of try and counter it as much as possible and we don't think it's that strong and eu's been very vehement in saying no this is the best composition you just haven't played it the right way so i think that will be the test going forward into what actually if if we remain on the same patch mind you hmm. i think it it kind of sets the, the tone for the rest of the event yeah, it's, I, it's, it's also very hard to sort of like ju- uh, mm, go from the coaching perspective, right? Because obviously, sure. the like the coach that is listed is most of the time, and I, I guess I can disclose this much, not the only one working on the team, yeah. right? And like a lot of uh, national teams have to have. It's, it's just too much work for just one guy, oh, right? Yeah. So there's there's a lot of like obviously if you see Jane like a now new analyst to the Overwatch League, and then D- Damon, who, to my knowledge, basically did all the strategy for Valiant. Like, that, from that po- point of view, okay, that's, that seems to be pretty clear to me. But then again, who is that backup? Who, who else has a say in, uh, um, here in, uh, in Canada, for instance? I think Bleeple probably helps out or whatever. So, like... I, I don't know who, who else is involved in that, but certainly I, I think they won't show up without uh, salt strategies. Um, well, for France, obviously, I mean it's it's always. I think France has more exploitable players. So depending on the meta, if you actually can do what France, for instance, did to uh, UK, if you can do that to Ben Best. Yeah, I think that's quite a feasible way to um, to win that matchup specifically. I think you can lean in on him, but yeah, we'll I, see how the matchup checks out. I also think, though, with with France, you've got you know you've got some people who you know are in. Uh, never mind. I need to think on that more. I'm I'm in the presence of Yeska and Valamel who call me out on a stupid opinion. I'm just gonna cut, shut it down now. Not at all, I'm not right? even gonna make it. No, not okay. even gonna make just it. Discussion. I'm just, just gonna discussion. leave it. I'm just, you know, I'm not ready to take that one Wait. here. I thought right we on. brought you for the brand factor. I'm confused. No, no, you didn't. You brought me because <laughs> you brought me because I, I, I know how to record and design yes. things. Yes. <laughs> That's it. And he's a fabulous no. host. Yes. I'm not I'm not here for the hot takes that for sh- that's for sure. <laughs> Although I'm still saying, you know, France is, you know, was never a down in my mind my number one pick in uh Paris qualifiers. There so you, go. you can actually actually though, for real, you can actually see that somebody can go back into Twitch chat when we were talking on around the payload, the one that you were on, Joe. Ah, that's right. Like that's there's right. no way France doesn't make it. So, that's true. Anyways, I think that that those screenshots do exist somewhere in the ether. Right, I was too busy screenshotting dreams, <laughs> saying no. Uh, let's pivot again though, because there's so much going on, and let's talk about rosters this last week. Rosters this last week, uh, lots of changes. So Hagapun promoted; he's going to be on the the Mayhem squad now, and he's not as a two way player, correct? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, not to my knowledge. I don't know if that has to be disclosed or not. I believe so. I mean, that's kind of how apply was brought on. Was he was um, very? They were very forthcoming in saying that he was going to be a two way player. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, if I'm using that as kind of a a standard, I, I would assume that they probably have to do the same with with Hago. Fair enough. So Yiska Hago on Whew. in Overwatch League. I know you've got opinions on opinions on this one. So, if we're thinking 20 teams, that means there are... I even give you 21, because Boston has an Echo and Aim God, so that puts your list uh, further down in order to get the best sense. Mm-hmm. don't think Hago is in there at all. 
Um, there's, I'm not sure, obviously, if people like Twilight, like Violet, like Wan J. Lee will be put, picked up. Even probably the five uh, flex support players below that level are still, like, I still think they, they should be given uh, a head start ahead of Kagopion. And then using that, you know, that strategy is it's so hilarious to me. Like, they obviously use, you know, that, 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 I'm not going to say loophole, but, you know, the, the mechanism of signing mm -hmm. him to his roster so nobody else signs him away. Who else would have done that? Like, <laughs> it's, it's not, that would, would have never happened, I think. Like, I think there's many more prospects. I'll give you a, actually, I would actually even pick Crimson over him. Easily, actually. I mean, if you're going to look at it pound for pound, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, depends if, on what kind of roster you want to exactly. be building. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I think um, obviously I still feel bad for because I'm I'm like based on that, it almost feels like Sire play is once again being set up to be, uh, let's say flat out or flash <laughs> yeah, That that whole roster kind of looks like a mess. You know, we, we have don't know to wait who and else. see. Exactly. We don't know exactly how or what that blueprint looks like for that roster, but as it stands right now, you've got what five, four or five Koreans on the team, and then Tavik, and it's like, okay, are we going full Korean? Is it going to be a mix? Are we, you know, trying to mix in Western players with Koreans? And I, I, I don't really see that working. But for Hago specifically, um, I feel like he was, um, he was very, very strong. GC Busan days like the same thing he kind of echoes the same story of Wu Hyo you know you know we, we remember Wu Hyo very fondly but when it came to changing D.Va and changing exactly how D.Va plays didn't really work out for him especially coming into the Overwatch League you know could be a myriad of different reasons the team atmosphere mm -hmm. how D.Va was played how D.Va kind of got patched and re retuned and forced you to play a certain different way forced you to be a little bit more aggressive I think um now has that happened to zen not so much so you know seeing his slight you know, and, and you know, not slight but you know downward curve it, it has been worrying but I, I i wonder if we're looking at it and I, and I mentioned this to somebody the other day now i wonder if we're looking at it from the lens of last year's meta if that makes sense you know looking at the lens of how strong zenyatta was and then directly applying that to hagopion it's like okay well does he have other heroes i've heard i can't say specifically but i've heard his honor is very good how how we haven't seen it so again we can't my really, honor is know, very good spread the word true. spread the yeah, word let, let the people know chat yeah. get out there but you know i i do think that he is you know towards the lower half of the 20 21 22 however where you want to wherever you want to put him um but but i wonder if we're we're giving him the the short end of the stick because of you know the recency bias of last year's meta and how strong zenyatta was and we're not really applying him to this new meta game where it is a little bit more flexible on what support heroes you can run so i i i'm my my kind of prediction is kind of out to the jury because it is just so different um, but yes, if you're going to look at him specifically on Zenyatta, I do think he has uh, definitely not performed up to the caliber that is expected from Overwatch League. So yeah. I also wonder what kind of price tag comes with him because he's a veteran and because he's sure, a exactly. big season. Like if you're actually paying more than ATK for him, I think that's absolutely unreasonable. Like there, there are like so many... Yeah, there's so many flex supports in line that you could probably get around the minimum salary of 50k where you could uh, take a gamble on that, even if it fails, would probably still be not significantly worse than him. So I don't know. I, I don't like that move at all. So are you guys both kind of worried about um, Mayhem going into Overwatch League Season 2 with what we've seen so far? There's not much time left. Uh, as far as bringing on existing players and whatever, are, are, are they still improving, but maybe a still bottom half team? Are they declining here, in your opinion? No, I think they will definitely be, be better than us, yeah. I don't think that you will see them in the bottom fifth. I fits. don't know. Like, I don't think you, they will be uh, bottom four. I can't, I can't see that. I think they are improvements have been significant enough then again it's hard to anticipate 
the level of the other it's teams. China. All the other you, teams are moving as well. Know. You nobody yeah. really knows what's going on in China at the moment. So it, yeah. I think they're going to be Shanghai included. You know that is a Chinese organization, and they kind of are just mm. super mysterious. Oh. Um, you know, we have Chengdu, Guangzhou, Hangzhou. Like we have no idea what that what those rosters even look like, even in rumor. Um, Good for you memorizing all those terms by now. Though, yeah, by well, way. I mean, come on, now can't can't represent China without kudos at least trying to, to you. I can tell you've written trying. a lot of articles about this, <laughs> dude. I, I I give you I give you two to one that Shanghai is going to uh, finish over Mayhem next year. Uh, I, take, I, 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 I would I believe that. How about I we bet I take face bet, lighting? I Let's bet face lighting here. <laughs> We'll we'll do that. Do I get two face lighting? <laughs> you have to get two, yeah, for his other monitor. Uh, well, let's... I want one of those selfie cams, you know, that where the oh, the have, ring have lights. They don't know if you're yeah. a live streamer or a porn star. Got it. Uh, let's talk about Dante to yeah. Outlaws, Smurf to Shock. Nice little actual one of the first. It feels like one of the first actual trades we've mm -hmm. seen in yeah. the off season, where it's actually been a trade and not some sort of. Give us a bunch of money. Here's a player type of thing. Uh, the outlaws, Joe, have kind of taken this this stance of, I don't want to say totally very American type uh, team, but Western I would players, say, yeah. but a lot of Western players, a lot of mm -hmm. players staying here in NA. And I would love to hear your thought on that. Bringing on uh, Dante here. Number one, do you think that uh, he will gel well? In oh, Houston, yeah, definitely. And I number two, do you think that he is one of, if not the best choices at that role for the Outlaws? I easily think that. Um, I think that's been a very big kind of narrative point. Um, talking about you know what would what kind of potential improvements Houston could make to their lineup because they are missing like a very um, defined role within that team and he's obviously one of the, the you know if we are going to assume that their kind of team building ethos is to you know favor some more Western players for whatever reasons um, you know to, to fit within the team dynamic whatever marketability all that you know if, it could be a number of reasons why they could want to do that um, Dante fits in with that I think super super well i think you know just hearing people talk about him seeing people talk about him having him talk on his own he seems very kind of um lovable in a very um younger brother sense you know he seems just like a a, a, a very talented player but again he, he i don't think you could dislike I, I feel like it would be very hard for me to believe that like somebody out there like dislikes dante he just kind of seems like your annoying <laughs> lovable younger brother who yeah, just kind of is a little it. dorky but you know you, you like him and yeah. you know in terms of specifically how he fits in with the meta sombra in the west is very very favored he has a very very strong sombra he fits in right now whatever the next meta looks like again he still applies a tracer he has the doomfist he, sombra he, I, he might have actually have a doomfist who knows and you know the kid can play does a whole anybody lot of have stuff. a doomfist at this point or are we just hydration are we I can just name you. Point? Okay, yeah. fair. All right, fair. It was it was a joke. He's, he's like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can name you five. The point is, is you know, jokes he, things you're talking about. I know. Oh, yeah, he God. doesn't. He doesn't get <sighs> jokes, man. I don't know why I'm here either, chat. <laughs> okay, so anyways, so you're you're on you're on fire. You like Dante here, Yiska? Ah, okay. Are you in the same boat here? Are you a big yes. fan of this Dante pickup? Why? Um, so basically one, obviously he fixes the po possible tracer requirement. I think he does it pretty well. I wouldn't expect him to win uh, an Overwatch League final with that, but I'm, I'm always, I have a fond place. And I think also it models well to have people that just consistently play and you, you can predict their level and then have certain players that are very spiky. Just because now, you like winning our fantasy Winston's lab league. Pretty much. Just yes. like to know what to expect. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I think the Outlaws actually have enough spiky, uh, streaky players like a Linkser. Linkser was incredibly uh, streaky, if you think about it, over, over the last season, where at his best, you could talk about him being possibly the best widow at the time. 
just like the stats said, said that um, I'm not 100% confident, but he at least performed that way. So like if you have a player like that, I, I think you don't want two streaky DPS players in general. I think if I look at the um, at the other teams in playoffs, that pretty much holds as well. Um, yeah, and then obviously the, the Sombra thing, if that actually survives till Overwatch League, I think Dante has... Um, has shown that he can play that. And if you want to keep that Western theme, which, by the way, like, Arhan broke that, which, okay, so... D I mean, mm, sure, but... Mm, oh, boy, don't play, though. Come on now. Yeah, like, at Arhan who? <laughs> like, how often have I we seen him? He played no, break what I, one time. What I heard was the problem was... He has it. Arhan got, has a doom fist, by the way. <laughs> I that, wouldn't doubt it. That they got a bucket... A family bucket at KFC, and there are, th I, I believe, 12 pieces in there, and then only, always one piece was left over. So they had to get another player, and Ahan solved that issue by eating the entire bucket himself. He likes eating Does meat. it hurt? It's, I, a, it's a Korean joke. Mm, do, we, do we stop the show now, or do we keep going? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, here's here's what I will give the Outlaws. They continue to cement themselves as the most wholesome team in Overwatch League. I don't, like, if I had a daughter and I was 30 years older, they could date any one of the Outlaws except for Rockus. They could, no problem. I trust them in that. And so, good job keeping uh, that nice and wholesome there. I I personally, like, I'm you know, I feel like there's a lot better players... Um, that I think there's a lot better solutions to the the outlaws problems for being a top tier team. And chat is going nuts on that comment right now. I just <laughs> knew it. I just effing <laughs> knew it. Which is why we're not even gonna, we're not even gonna sit there anymore. Uh, no. Blue Haas. Can we talk about Blue Haas for a second? Shanghai. KDP Shanghai. Coach. New coach, uh, hopefully unboosted. Uh, Yiska, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Blue Oz here for Shanghai? Okay, here's, here's meta commentary, because how would I be able to know? Like, how does anyone know how good a coach is in Overwatch? Unless someone has a long tenure in Overwatch. Like, for instance, I totally get the hype for Arrow. Like, I think... I, I, I was it 2016 yeah it might have mm. been already 2016 where he you know had that immortals roster before that he mm. worked also into that immortals roster then he obviously was uh, the coach of fnr gfe then fusion university popped up at this point you have a track record where you can actually say okay this is happening yep. blue has i have no idea I, I don't think he had any other gigs or at least publicly that i know of other than kdp so how would i be able to know how do i know that the players don't coach themselves how do i know that um what he is saying is actually the input how do i know that he doesn't employ outside analysts that aren't even tagged onto the liquipedia page like i have no way to judge uh judge, judge these players now, what I can tell you is that KDP has a great ability to um, raise these elite players and had over the seasons. They always had at least one or two elite players among them. And if that was the guy that was able to arise that quality, then amazing. But, like, I wouldn't put any money on that. Yeah. yeah, no, I completely I just, agree. Like, I wasn't sure if you're gonna keep going with that sentence or not. It felt <laughs> felt like a comma. Okay, a little bit. Yeah, but no, I completely agree. Um, after kind of rewatching the contenders finals between Runaway, I thought that the team overall, um, specifically had a lot of like very set plays. They were very coordinated in exactly what they were doing. You know, there there were small windows that they would capitalize on. That you know, a team that you know, presumably would have, you know, uh, lesser coaching staff may have not uh, been able to pick up on by themselves or, you know, maybe their mechanical skill is that good. Um, what I think Yiska 
is not saying is that you know blue Haas is a bad coach and you know no. I, I don't think that context i think that's completely taken out of context what i mm. what i what i what i would agree with is that we just don't know you're not going to know exactly what a person's you know uh, how they think and what their philosophies are if they aren't either public or if you just don't work with them so it's difficult to say you know how strong is is a coach if they're not you know coming out here and 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 kind of not leaking but you know throwing out little factoids of information that they have found or you know you physically work with them and can pick their brains so it's it is difficult to say it, it's it's a it's a sign of good things to come for the the organization as a whole because if we've learned anything throughout the overwatch league is if you follow the coach players tend to tend to come with them i mean good point. just just a thought experiment right sure if we go by Wizard Young, Wizard Young's team list reads Splice, Team Solomid, and Gale Force Esports. None of those teams turn any heads no. at any given point. Like, I don't think also Team Solomid and I mean, GFE was one of the big juggernauts before. Um, I don't know specifically when he was with GFE, but they were mm -hmm. one of the big juggernauts before we started to get. Um, kind of into the the pre the pre contenders summer. era, right before yeah, we went from contenders I mean, into Overwatch League. So they were strong. I I don't know if I you know maybe, maybe I'd, I'm I would say thinking. Junkyard at hundred hundred and fifty percent. Anytime you're like, what do they need to play? Who do who do they need to beat? GFE number one on that list. But yeah. I again, I, mean, I I'm not. I don't have the mm -hmm. window open on me. I could have yeah. my timeline totally messed up, and it could that's, not have been an the, overlapping thing. Yeah, that's the weird, like, how far back, you know, is it? Because, yeah, it's it, yeah. it's definitely not reaching, but it's it's definitely, you know, late 2016, I would guess, is where we're kind of thinking. And, yeah, it's a... I would say, I don't even number. think Overwatch League was a, was a oh. thing yet. I, I don't even know if we no, had no. contenders yeah. yet. Yeah. I no, think we just had... I think this was before, like, season This zero, is, like, like monthly card. melee yeah. days, where it's, like, monthly yeah. melee was your big yeah, monthly. I think so. Like, even if you keep this going, right, LW Red was, I mean, sometimes surprising. I think they, for instance, had GC, Bus number, GC Busan's number pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, LW Blue... Like that doesn't even really matter because I think he coached uh, LW Blue when they weren't really you know participating yeah. in any tournament, so you don't have data on that. And then, well, the one relevant data point you have is NYXL. Now, what about Pavane? What about all the other guys? Right? It's it's very hard to predict at this point how good of a coach he is. And by the way, I think the DC gig is a great opportunity for him to actually prove that. Because um, like if, if the budget cuts things are true, then now he has the opportunity to take these, you know, supposedly like cheap players, find the diamonds in the rough, raise them to that level that both incorporates his Moneyball approach of finding the, that talent, then also through data or just general coaching, uh, improve them to a world class level. I think if he actually manages to make DC like a, a serious contender, at least for playoffs, or depending, obviously, we don't know any of the roster really yet, other than Janus. Um, like, yeah, th that's that's the uh, proving point. And then you, yeah, uh, yeah. So they have other coaches there. Obviously, it's 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 hard for me to all attribute the entirety of what nyxl did to wizard young and if i do then i probably also have to attribute the downfall of nyxl in uh in the playoffs to him if he was the strategic mastermind behind that by playing way too idealistic overwatch so mm. I, I don't know what's what what the um what the thought behind that is but I, all I'm saying really is it's incredibly hard to at this point to evaluate coaches unless they have long tenure of positive outcomes like an arrow does. Long tenure mm -hmm. and lots of changing situations with yep. strong correlations to those changing situations. So it's yeah. not just enough that hey, I've been here with the squad for a year. That squad needs to have changed and your results need to have been uh good if not better than how they were before right because it's not mm -hmm. just enough to just 
be on a team and have them do good for you know one and have one. them do well otherwise you look and see you know to your point take the first three stages of nyxl wizard young's genius right he's been there the whole time no major changes at all then stage four happens and playoffs happens and that changes and then you go before overwatch league and you see these different things there's it's not it's not easy, which is why I like to ask the question about coaches a lot. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm really thankful that to finally have people on the show who just like understand, like, it's it's really difficult. It's not mm -hmm. as simple as just a, this coach is good, this coach is bad. But mm -hmm. there's also the, the idea behind it that, um, you know, coaches, because I, I think at the same time, you have deals where like, I, I have immense respect for Arrow, mm -hmm. but in the first two weeks when he took over as coach as uh, Dallas Fuel, I wasn't ready to go. Yep, that's Arrow's doing right there. Thank you, Arrow. Go, you know, go Arrow. And that's all you saw. Anytime anyone talked about Dallas Fuel, is about how Arrow turned Dallas around. And maybe you can do that. Maybe a coach can do that. I have yet to see a professional sport or an esport where that can happen. And I do believe that since then he's maintained that turnaround to a phenomenal level. And I would say is one of, if not the best Western coach that we, we have right now. But I think it's, it, it's very, it's very easy to misattribute successes and failures with coaches because yeah. of how little information is out there and how privileged that information is to people mm -hmm. who are yeah. inside the organization. Right. That it actually gets even more complicated if, because if you think in, in professional sports, how often a coach absolutely bombs a team, then goes to the next one and then th like almost wins the league title or something, or does indeed. Like sometimes it's just a time and place for, for everything or chemistry between the players you have or whatever has to uh, work out or there's a specific meta that this coach is very good at understanding and setting up strategies. I don't think even think if you have two bad performances with a team, if if the ownership or the GM has a good understanding of what this guy is doing, I don't think you can be results driven, right? As much at at some point you obviously have to, but what but what I'm basically saying, if I'm a new GM, I don't know if I look at his track record necessarily. Obviously, I, I ideally want someone with a track record like Arrow, but at the same time. Basically, only Korean coaches have that at this point. And even, like, for instance, take someone like Kaikai Kai that now has one stain on his, um, on his resume. Don't think that makes him sour grapes. So, yeah. Well, it depends who you're talking to, right? <laughs> um, Supposedly. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about DC because we do have some big changes in DC happening. Avala, assistant coach, MKL, analyst for DC. So we're rounding out the coaching squad here with Wizard Young, Avala, and MKL, presumably being at least the majority of that coaching staff and support staff going into season two. All right, Yiska, I got to put a leash on you a little bit. You can't go right. totally off the chain here, but mm -hmm. I, I want to hear your thoughts, especially on Avala going into Overwatch League Season 2 as an assistant coach for this DC squad. Once again, I have to probably say that I won't be able to judge that. If I'm thinking of the two teams she was on, that's obviously Optic and Metabellum. Both teams had some interesting parts. Both teams really didn't convince. I'm not sure how much of that can be attributed to really whatever she was doing at this point. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's um, not a positive or a negative. It's just hard to, to pinpoint exactly what her doing in, that, in those teams was actually because we're not under. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, and, and quote me as wrong, is this the first <laughs> female coach that we have in Overwatch League? Overwatch League, yeah. Yeah, specifically for the Overwatch League, for, yes. Specifically I think in for contenders, Overwatch League. XL2 has, has, a, has a female. Kita. Uh, yeah, Akita has, has a... I don't know if she's assistant coach or head coach, but I know she's on the staff for XL2 for sure. Yeah. What about, yeah. What about MKL for you, Joe? I mean, how, do you, how are you feeling? Obviously, let's put the controversies aside here. 
Sure. Well, let's just talk about DC from the fact that their coaching staff is Wizard Young, who obviously NYXL, that's a big pickup. Mm-hmm. Reportedly a $250,000 pickup. But besides that, again, I don't have the numbers for that. You have MKL, <laughs> you have Avala, and you sure. have Wizard Young. How, how are you feeling about this DC team right now? I think if they are going to go with a kind of a mixed roster and, and <laughs> kind of um, add in talented, you know, foreign players as they see fit, I think that, you know, a lot of the Western players do kind of respect him or have worked under him. Um, but again, I, it's very difficult to know exactly what a coach does if you're not with them or under them or, you know, they put out content that shows exactly how they think and what their kind of thought processes are. Um, so so for me, Michael or MKL is not that Michael. No, it's not. It's not. It's not King Michael. Um, it is MKL. And um, I, I'm looking to see good things from him. Um, I, I think that coaching staff in in its entirety should be a, a very strong test of, you know, OK, Wizard Young, you're now, you know, faced of building your own team. You're, you're, you're given the reins to build a money ball approach. How do you do it? OK, Avala, MKL, you're given and you Kitta, know, right? Uh, so I, I, I neglected this, but I believe Kitta, K-I-T-T-A, is also on that coaching staff. That's from Thibbledork in chat correcting me. Am I wrong? No, no, that? no. He's, I don't. He's saying that she's the assistant coach for XL. Too. Oh, yes. okay, got it. I yeah, was like, not, I don't think she's with DC. This is why I just don't no. have strong feelings and opinions on my <laughs> own opinions on it. This is why I'm hosting right now. Hey, Thank you. No. Sorry, my bad. So Kitta is was got it. Okay, yeah. perfect. Got it. I, I think I think this the staff entirely is is strong. They have you know strong backing from the public they seem to be you know well respected but i i have to see more from them to be able to give a, a stronger opinion on them here's a hot take for you get your clips currently, button ready yeah currently yeah i don't think there's a team more likely to underperform in comparison to their expected finish than dc i think they could very easily just are, are people saying this. that DC is going to fucking smash? I mean, yes. Uh, are they? Yeah. Fair yes. Enough. As soon as Wizard was brought on, as soon as Wizard was brought on, I think people immediately attributed NYXL's success to him and then immediately said, this is the expansion team that is going to really disrupt the uh, hmm. existing teams in Overwatch League. I can't tell you the quality of those opinions or the people behind them, but I can tell you very if, much. If so. that is the sentiment, then yeah, I would, um, I would probably tend to agree. It's yeah. it, it's very easy to want to get behind DC. I think, especially sure. if you look pre um, some of the the stuff that has happened over the two weeks, and just look at the 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 players and, and and the the staff and look at it and go this is a team that I want to win and it's definitely filled with people who have shown that they are very smart and very capable mm-hmm. in the past but chat is oh sorry I thought you no no, no go ahead sorry. go ahead please chat chat is saying that the last time I predicted a uh, team to underperform was an NYXL <laughs> and obviously that didn't go that well so fair I mean, enough so let's define underperform there what was your definition at the time of underperform where did you yeah let's them? go let's spin this really quick spin they, team let's do it live i think i, I thought i think i in the episode i th- said they would finish fourth in yeah, the regular I, season. I think that was a reasonable assumption because we haven't uh, yeah we haven't that's seen not played uh, for you me know, for, underperforming is at least hey they're gonna be top four they finish in bottom half. Yeah. That's the threshold, and any amount down from that, you know, if they finish top half but they're bottom four, that's kind of where I where I sit. So, so where would you put you know out of twenty teams, Jessica? Where is DC finish in comparison to how you know inflated we think their their kind of uh, presence is within the scene with literally no yeah. no uh, bias. Do, do you know, like, obviously not knowing their player staff. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, the things you hear, what kind of players that even entertaining to trial. 12th. 12th? Mm-hmm. So lower, lower more, middle? Lower the middle of the pack, yeah. Hmm. 
I, yeah, yeah, it'll I'm, be interesting to see what that team kind of shakes out to be because it is it is interesting. It'll be very interesting. People don't know, but <laughs> chat, you guys cannot agree. <laughs> you guys are like be, top ten, people not top ten. Big guns, yeah. I think, and the old teams are all upgrading considerably. Mm -hmm. The new that's, teams. That's why I think twelve is so like reason, like so like uh, optimistic almost. Yeah, no, but I think 12 is reasonable because I think they they will have a thorough approach to try and out their talent. Mm -hmm. And it's it's unlikely that they are going to be like super bad. But and this is all yeah, done. I don't know. This is all being done without even knowing which players are on the team. So exactly. uh, it's like you well. guys don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to pause here until Yiska tells us chat. Because we don't yeah, let right. those comments go. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But those li we're, those, we're, we're, we're through with those lives. If you were, we're if back. you were a GM of DC, which players would you have? <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, all right, fair enough. Let's let's talk about the last one, and this is a uh, addition that should be coming later today. Is the shock should be announcing Rascal? I mean, a new player. To um, the like, roster. You sick there? You sick Sorry. There yeah. Up. Very, very, very sick. <laughs> yeah. It's just been a really rough day. Really rough day. Anyways, Shock announcing a new player using the uh, American Amer America Emergency Services tone bleeps to announce this, by the way, which is not a good idea. And I don't know how it goes for media online but if you put that on a tv you're getting sued for at least thirty nine thousand dollars just a heads up san francisco he's even got the number thirty nine thousand dollars minimum minimum anyways so rethink that for a second i encourage you but uh new player coming in looks like it's going to be rascal although yiska you're telling me that there's a small part of you that thinks that it might be a different player well, Rascal seems a logical choice, obviously. The, mm -hmm. the thing is, I wonder if Shock doesn't have a bigger requirement in other areas. Now, to, to sort of lessen the blow, what, what I'm about to say, I think Sleepy definitely like had a very good performance for a rookie, right? So I... Personally, would have also picked him over Rockus for uh, Team USA. Um, he he definitely played a better season than Rockus, I would say. Uh, even though not considerably so. Um, but the thing is, if if the same weighting of importance remains in in the Overwatch League, by which I mean flex supports were immensely support uh, important, pretty much over three-fourth of the season and then if you had a a very skilled flex support if he was then also able to just skills transition like a bedosin did for instance for london that was a huge boon so if you just had a very good player on the flex support position that was arguably the most important position in overwatch league season one yeah. where you could also argue main tanks so if i am shock and want to upgrade my team i'm looking at korean players i already opened that box Yep. I'm looking at Twilight. I'm looking at uh, Violet. I'm looking at Wang Jae Lee. These these names have to be on their uh, short list of hires. Also, I would assume that um, already established teams, so season one teams, can more f spend the that funding for rosters more pointedly now on on, on specific things they need to increase. Also. Because of the one plus one rule, they are already probably way cheaper to maintain than uh, new expansion teams. So I would think that if a team like Shock wants to have a Korean certain Korean player and targets him hard, um, I think they should at least get their third pick from in, in that uh, regard. So I I think there is a slight possibility that they are announcing a new flex support. See, I, I would agree with you, but I would flip the role. I think that, yes, 
I, I do believe that flex support will consistently be a role that changes and you'll need to kind of adapt. I don't think we'll, I mean, it's possible, but I don't think we'll see a such a dominant pick in the future that Zenyatta kind of was that, that staple must run, you know, dominant force throughout three fourths of the season. Like you said, I think that that will now apply kind of inversely, right? So there, there are more diversity in terms of what support players you're saying. I think that will apply to the main tank position as well, where you're to, to your kind of point, you know, we have already opened up the Korean box. Um, you know, who else could we get me personally? you know, just predicting and trying to, you know, look at other main tanks. I think that, you know, Sol has a has a main tank that speaks, you know, pretty high levels of English. He I think he would fit well, kind of play a Bishu role, can play multiple different things, has a Rhine, hard to really judge it. His Winston was serviceable, could could work well. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. There like you go. It. Sorry, I, I was looking for the uh, echo that's apparently happening because of me, which doesn't make sense. I don't because know. I've obviously, as you can see, I don't know if you can hear that through that or if it's my sound card. But I don't uh, know. Maybe uh, it's somebody else. I just like to pick on you, Scott. <laughs> um, we've got. I've got one more thing I want to talk about with you guys, and that is going to be some Roadhog changes potentially coming up. They're supposed to be in this latest PTR. But they aren't because of some animation differences and whatever that they need to redo. But let's talk about the elephant in the room in a second. In a second, uh, for a second, J Jeff Kaplan has over three hundred hours on Tank Heroes. Yeah, that's a. Uh, you know, if he's you know uh, a man of you know not a even similar a mind to myself, exactly. You know, if if you know we know that we can't aim, why bother trying? Just let that's me. Let me let me put up a shield. Let me let me support my team. You know, it's not it's not a not a bad not a bad look by good old Papa Jeff. That like playing only main tanks as the lead developer of uh, Overwatch is like managing a McDonald's and trying to be the fries that jump into the you know into mm -hmm. the oil yep. to, Keep going. in order to test if it's yeah. if it's hot enough. Sure. Obviously, like that's not a not can you a give me another analogy, please. That one was so good. I need another one. So unlike, <laughs> so the fries jumping into the trail oil. Yeah. No. <laughs> Just no. No. Where did that? Yiska, where did that <laughs> even? You come? should when when we yeah. first started, you know, story time here. Oh shit. Me and Yiska actually got into a, a Twitter argument. That's how like we met. And we just kind of became friends through DMs. Yiska and never does that, ideas. by the way. No, definitely very, not. Very, never yeah, nothing. Very seldom kind of gets on a Joe hill and, and Yiska and... are like the polar opposites on how to engage in social media. <laughs> like, Joe just ignores the trolls, and uh, Yiska, Yiska it's his sustenance. To yeah. slay them. Yeah, and, and exactly. And, them. and by that Oddly logic, my, Jane is about to be the, my, the best band at my wedding. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. Who knows, right? Uh, yep, that's yeah. true. Can but here, but here. my Canada DMs Grand Finals. are just filled with strange metaphors to describe how you know teams should be built, and I want to say there was butter involved, and that could get you know. I'll, I'll let your minds wander on how that was applied. No, let's but, sit, let's uh, sit on that butter. On, let's, let's let's get, okay. Yeah, mm. let's. Hmm. But it was, uh, yeah, there's there's lots of, he's very metaphorical in how he explains things. And, you know, I uh, I, I, I kind of self-identify with that. I, I, too, find myself trying to explain things in my own weird, strange world of metaphors. So, yeah, I think I think he does just spit metaphors out. Doesn't make sense sometimes, but, you know, sometimes they yeah. sometimes 80% miss. of the time, they're great. 20% yeah. of the time, they're fries jumping into... 8 out of 10 into... doctors say that his metaphors are great. Yeah, that's true. The other I 2%... think I was already at a therapy session today. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 if I known that, that you guys would go this deep. Holy... Wow. So I need to say Thank one you. thing, though. This does not... Just because Jeff showed all of his hours on a tank, on tanks, doesn't mean that he only plays tanks. That could be just a, an account that only plays tanks. You might have a, sure. an account for different types. You hey, are you telling me that, that Jeff Kaplan is a one-trick pony tank? He, that's what chat <sighs> is saying right now, and, like, I mm. understand where they're coming from. 
But I also don't know if that's that's the hill I want to die on for why <laughs> uh, for why the devs are or aren't capable of balancing their game. So I, I just want to add that there. Let's talk about the more important thing, though. Roadhog changes. So we've seen yes. Roadhog, Roadhog, a combination of like once. I don't know. I don't know what the actual number is, but we don't see a whole lot of Roadhog these days. We're gonna see yeah, some balance changes. To. Is there? What are the balance changes besides going back to Hook 1.0? Uh, what are some balance changes that you want to? You would want to see to Roadhog to make it a more viable pick in a comp a competitive Overwatch environment like Contenders or an Overwatch League. I think he definitely has a place specifically in this kind of very tank heavy meta that could or could not be. We'll have to see, uh, you know, what happens when we see that those two styles clash during World Cup. Um, I think that he fills a very niche role and I think just a very um, if we're going to use Reaper as kind of a, a, a standard, I think, you know, just having an animation to cancel whole hog would be a nice quality of life where it's like i don't i don't want to use this you know reinhardt I don't think... cancels my whole hog he just it's shatters true. me but what if i just want to stop it on my own true reaper gets to now exactly. with like exactly. wraith form you can you can cancel wraith form and that does something different you know possibly you could see him get a free reload if he cancels whole hog or maybe he retains a little bit of ult charge i you know that would have to be those that's the a numbers that you chat, don't kill me Oh yeah, the the good old where you, know, you could like if you didn't reload. shoot it, you only got fifty yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. It could be something like that where if you cancel it early, you know the the timer of the alt runs out a little bit slower than normal, and if you cancel it early, you you retain some of that residual alt charge. I think that would be a little strong depending on how quickly that dial turns. But you know, I think you know in terms of a reasonable timeline, you know they wanted to you know implement this early. Um, it, it had to have been pushed back, so it it. it it doesn't seem like it's a huge change. And again, they, they reiterated that it wasn't going to be a rework or it could just be just a retuning. They didn't use the word rework. I think Jeff was very keen on saying this isn't going to be a rework if I'm quoting the, the paragraph specifically. Um, so I think it is going to be a small change that, you know, could have more functionality than um, what we're thinking of. So something, um, something that applies to an animation. So maybe a cancel of some sort um, that also does another thing right so you know all charge yeah. reloads whatever i mean it's if we if you're playing a little bit of sherlock here sure. so it's a new animation that needs to be crafted for this mm -hmm. so one thing that could be different is um take a breather certainly sure um whatever that might change into i think the problems with roadhog is basically he's very immobile and Can't he doesn't himself. have an ultimate. He doesn't have an ultimate. You know, one of those ultimates that you use in order to like. Sometimes you are in situations. So for instance, you go, um, you finish like a escort map. Uh, both of them do, and then you hold the opponent at first point, and then you want to have an ultimate that has a big impact, and that's simply not whole hog. Like I. I probably underrate the ultimate, but yeah, it's definitely not a graph, right? And um, the, the problem also is then, I, I'm not even sure if it's fair to say that he really charges a lot of ults for, for the opponent anymore, but yeah, I don't know. Like, it just feels like, where would you even put in Rotog if it's not gimmicky or Risa Hog? Like, that's yeah, basically the only I don't know where I would run Roadhog where I wouldn't prefer to have a Zarya. I think people are trying to run it into like the Doomfist Sombra where they're using it as a counter. I just don't know how strong it is. I haven't spent the time to really look at how feasible that is to catch the Doomfist on the way in. Or, you know, uh, is it a comfort pick over a Brigida or over um, your own Sombra where it still is applying pressure to the dive that's coming in? So normally, again, like Doomfist Sombra, Winston, you know, dive tanks, that's that's the, kind of the standard NA stuff that's kind of going on right now. Uh, China has their own kind of spin on that, but I won't get into it. Um, 
so using Roadhog or, or thinking about Roadhog in the essence that, you know, a Brigida or a McCree is looked at, you know, it, it's just the threat of CC is, you know, weighing on them. So you, you look at him as, you know, potential hack target, you know, then it shuts down his take a breather, shuts down his hook. It shuts down a lot of different things. But just looking at, at him in that light, I feel like he could be like <laughs> third tier on the list of ways to defeat that composition or at least combat it um, in a very interesting way. Um, but yeah, I think just the fact that he has any form of hard CC is, is definitely a threat to that comp. So, mm. yeah, yeah. I, I, think I think it could be used. In general, you will, will find if you, at least that's my impression of patch notes, mm -hmm. you have a general trend in the meta where yeah. Blizzard feels that there is no, not enough variety in solutions to that specific comp or just none at all. And then they will take a character and look at it and see if they can restructure that hero in order to provide a counter. And so, sometimes that works and sometimes it do doesn't. Now, if we're saying like Doomfist Sombra is an issue right now, I can definitely see that this change that's upcoming does something to uh, that specific combo. What that would entail, I'm not even sure. Like. It could be, for instance, something, I don't know, if you take a breather, there's a slight AOE and you knock out Sombras. Or I have no idea, but basically, you know, like the, the little pig things in Warcraft 3 that had like thorns. Nobody oh, remembers the that. the quills? I'm just, yeah. Like the thorns aura? Yeah. Something like I mean, that. It's I mean, that'd be kind of interesting, like applying like a Thorns aura. Like, I think Rally is kind of just a, a better version of like Devotion aura. So if you had like a, you know, Roadhog. Are like, you using thorns. a World of Warcraft metaphor right now? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, it, we, we got it on Paladins and Warcraft 3. So, I mean, it's possible that we get some sort of weird Druid tie in for Roadhog. I don't know. It's possible. It'd be kind of cool. He gets like yeah. damaged and he applies like a little bit of damage back to you. Be kind of interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Or yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we need to think there's, of there's this a lot more. of different. Yeah, that's a that's we could you know there's all kinds of different speculation you could make about Roadhog. You know, there's yeah. you know mm. I don't there's know a ton of different. We could we could go all crazy and and think about some fun stuff. But I don't know how often we're going to talk about balance changes on the show. <laughs> but um, as long as they're accompanied by Warcraft metaphors, I'm okay. Hey, I, we can we can we can shoehorn those in all day. I think Yiska, true. you know, has a very very rich history that you know we definitely did. I've heard Yiska try to play so. Rogue in World of Warcraft, and <laughs> I don't trust. I don't trust whoa, him. Whoa, at this whoa, whoa! He plays a monk. Come on. He's oh, not it's a, a monk. Rogue. What's it, yeah. it's just a panda rogue. Um. So, all right. It's actually just a like a fake thing I tell you because I'm simply locked into World of Warcraft next to my NPC. That's basically what I'm doing all day. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, I think this is a good split. A good place to stop the show for episode number one. We got sure. a good yeah. hour and twenty minutes in, and it was smart. It was concise. We only had one f bomb. No, nah, chat I think I is too. still I think talking I about World Cup. Let's go. Uh, they're still like they're still talking about France and World Cup. I don't. Hey, I don't know. Let why. them go. Let it rock. It's over. France is better than UK. Move <sighs> on. Easily called that from a mile away. Mile away. <laughs> mile away in the future to now. Yeah, got it. Uh, but I, really, for just a moment, number one, Joe Yiska, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. So th thank you guys for finally uh, doing this with me. I know it was a lot of work for us to finally get it. And even this morning, we we're almost going to push it another day. And I'm like, can I get this done in three hours? Yeah, we can get it done in three hours. Yeah, we can do this. So uh, thank you all for being here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, we do have uh, more plans for these in the future every week. Like I said, Monday, probably around the same time, right around okay. like 11 AM Pacific time is I think when we're looking at doing them. In do we the... want to, do we want to do the chat questions or do we want to cut it here? Oh, we got which chat questions. I don't have any in the discord just, here. Let's just do a, a lightning round. Let's uh, okay, fine. We're going to do a lightning do like a round quick, chat questions. We'll do like 10 minutes. Chat questions. Right. We need them right now. Looking for additional guests, KT. Yes. DM us or DM me, and we'll I'm sure we'll find something. 
because yes, we will be having a lot of get the guests on the show, bro. How are you going to do us like that, bro? It's just how I do. Um, who is the most wash up Overwatch coach? Yes, God, I'll let you take that one. The most wash up. up, like clean and well dressed, because that's Depay. Dude does dude showers every like four or five hours, from what I hear. But if you mean like washed up, is it no longer relevant? <laughs> I didn't say that about Depay. I did not say that about Depay. Yes, knows. Like. That's the the thing is there are so many obscure coaches that yeah. never even like where is let's say tier Cuddles? one and tier two tier one and tier two who was the immortals like original coach that was like kind of like implementing like um meditation it wasn't specifically meditation but it was um like ooh you know what I'm talking about yeah and like where where has he been chance I think it was I think he's coaching at Silence Retreat chance. Yeah, I, I always thought that he had like a good head on his shoulders. I wouldn't say he's washed he up by any means, but I kind of want to see for tank, didn't yeah. he? For like the winter yeah, yeah. premiere or something the, like yes, that. I believe so. Yeah, if I remember correctly, he yeah, couldn't, uh, yeah, couldn't meditate them out of that tournament. That's for sure. Most overrated player. Who coach? Um, coach? Yes, guys. well, no. Somebody, somebody else did ask most overrated. Oh, player. most overrated player. Who? Let me think. Who do you not want to hang out with at BlitzCon? <laughs> because yeah, right. that's that's what this answer. Uh, woo. Elk announced he's joining Fusion proper. Fissure. Fissure. Oh yeah, that is that is about that time. So congratulations, Fissure. Elk. Fissure. Yeah. All right, so we are looking for a third mm. co-host. Who... I love how <laughs> you that in, and you're like. Ah, let me continue that. What is going on? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think you know. Again, when you look at like overrated type of questions, it's you know about what the community kind of like just keeps reiterating over and over and kind of builds up to like this this an impossible degree of certainty that he is like or this person is just so amazing that it just can't be true. So it's not a it's no shade to any of these people, but it's just like, yeah. It is a little bit inflated, you know, that the community is just building you up. You know, I, I do think Pine is very talented, but I think Pine's up there. I think he is an incredible mechanically gifted player, but is he, you know, God's gift to Widowmaker and McCree? I, I don't think he so. He played consistently, yeah? Well, that's the thing. If you could fix the consistency, yeah, he would He would meet all those expectations, oh. but that's the heroic downfall. It's like if you f- fix if Jake hits headshots. Like, yeah, you just, you just, like, you, you can't just fix one we fundamental just, thing. Exactly. Here's another one. Bird ring. Okay, Are Mr. People, Prophet. Is he, over, no is bias. he overrated, yeah, though? I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't know. People had him over Profit as season MVP, as All Stars player. As that's true. Was that because he was overrated, or Profit was underrated? No, nope. that's a good point. Bertring has had an overall worse average performance over the season. I would agree. Than who reg? Uh, I don't know about that. Like, okay, depending on how you value peaks, and if you say peaks are very, very important, obviously stage one was very important. He had such an awful mid-season. It's actually absolutely insane. If you look at his stats in particular, it's insane. He has stats of a flex support sure. on a bad team that's just getting hammered on, on Widow. Like, obviously, yes, that is that is part of, you know, the wrist injury stuff, but... The way this kid is overhyped in terms of his season performance was absolutely insane. I yeah. don't know. Obviously, I, I, I was very... Yeah, I am a, a, um, aware that he is a very good player when he's at his, at his best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to say that he could have been a season MVP is absolutely insane. Yeah, no. Yeah. I think people tend to lean on the fact that, you know he was so highly touted in, in apex and um yeah now it's it, it's a different story easily no yeah. no so, like the, the question here in chat is why why was he worse than uh Hureg? for one one and a half stages Hureg was the better widowmaker and it wasn't close like burring it 
Like that was actually where you had to ping, uh, put in Hoorang mm -hmm. because Birdring wasn't performing. Oh, for whatever reason, whatever was the wrist, whether it was other, mm -hmm. you know, of course, out, yeah. out forces, uh, you know, applying and pressuring him, then yeah, Hoorang had a hero pool that, that they wanted to flex onto, but, you know, obviously I think they are kindred spirits in a way that they didn't really utilize them as as best as they could again like birdring and genji didn't really look that solid a lot of the times he was off on his own you remember the blizzard world you remember all the anubis maps they were all doing their the different things they were kind of operating with with multiple lines instead of like that single focus you know dive centric mentality yeah. um yeah it was it, it was a mess so, if you look at the whole yeah. season if you go like people go back, watch how often the analyst desk or the casters say that Birdring is the star player of London Spitfire when he was literally very likely only the sixth best player in relative comparison on London over the season. And that that is basically why why I thought that his reputation was way overrated in a sense because gesture was an absolute monster for the vast majority of the season as was profit mm -hmm. like bedosin is top uh, top three flex support in the overwatch league uh who am i missing nas closer Nuss. but like like fury is obviously fury, yeah. as, as the uh like also top three god's divas. gift a diva like i don't know like at this point you, you i don't know like yeah, even yeah, he, he definitely he definitely kind of contends with, I, I think, me personally, I think Nuss, it's in there. You know, it's, 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 rough. it's rough. rough. Fair enough. All right, we're at exactly an hour and a half. Yes. This feels like a really good spot to stop. If you have more questions you want for us to ask on the show, uh, you can tweet any of us. Tweet at OWL Daily Show, because it's going to go on the same podcast feed, and that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm, I'm going to find Or email uh, overwatchleaguedaily at gmail.com. It's been cycling through uh, the entire time. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Send us more questions there. I'm sure you could probably find us on Discord, whatever. Just send us questions. Wherever you think that we are, we are probably there. We'd love to answer them. And this was really fun until, mm -hmm. like, uh, chat had a stroke about uh, Yiska saying <laughs> that Hurig was better than Birdring or whatever that was. So, uh, until then, though, it was <laughs> very productive. And I loved it. Also, uh, make sure to follow all the hosts on Twitter at Volamel, at Yiska Out, and at Kick Tripod. Uh, and we'd love, you know, to hear your thoughts on episode one. Um, this was just, you know, a lot of fun. I want to do this more with you guys every week. Yes, please. Let's do it. Um, chat, thank you so much. I didn't expect so many for you to be here for episode one, so I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for episode one. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Uh, we'll see you guys in like a week. Bye. <clears throat>